in God, you will never regret trusting God's wisdom. If, if, if you trust him with your family, it will be blessed from generation, from generations, and from generations to come. If you place your hope in God, you will never be disappointed. In the end, you always win. Those of you who are heartbroken and those of you who have been hurt, if you put your trust in God, if you live for God, God gonna heal you. Good morning, Heidi. Welcome to church. Good morning, Heidi. Welcome to church. Come on, y'all. Give me that energy. Hey, let everything that is breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that is breath say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise in the valley. I praise on the mountain. I'm 
Come on, is that your testimony that you're going to praise the Lord on this morning? Listen, I just believe this, that God does not want us just to come into worship to praise him only, but to connect with the person next to us. Amen. And so will you just take a moment just to look at the person next to you and tell them good morning. Tell them it's good to see you. Amen. Tell them your hair look good. Amen. Come on. Give them a compliment. Listen, because we can't go into vertical worship if we don't even speak to the person next to us. Amen. And so I just want to take a moment to welcome all of you. If you are visiting with us for the very first time, we want you to know we appreciate you. We are thankful for you. We know you could have gone anywhere, but we believe God has navigated your steps here. Amen. And so it's simple. We are here to inspire people to follow Jesus Christ because we don't want them to live a life that is unfulfilled but we want them to live the fulfilling life that God always intended. Amen. And so we praise God and thank God on today that something will be said, something will be done that will change your life forever. Amen. So can I, can we just go to God in prayer and cover our moment on today? If you would just bow with me as we pray. Father, we love you and we thank you today, oh God. We thank you for your presence and your power. We thank you, God, that where your spirit is, there is liberty. We thank you, God, that the sick shall be healed, God, that, that the broken shall be mended, God. We thank you today, God, that you will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works in us. And so, God, we take this moment to surrender to your will, to surrender to your way, God. We prepared, God, for this moment to worship you and to exalt your name and so God we release your spirit in this place God those watching online and here today we thank you today that today is a fresh start God and your mercies are new today and so God we love you we thank you we give you glory and we give you honor it's in Jesus name we pray and the people of God said amen come on put your hands together like this here we bless your name. If you know it, sing it with us. So, write them on the tablets. Branches, he who abides in me will forever be fruitful indeed. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one gets to the Father except that He comes through me. Yeah. So we say, Let not mercy. Forsake you, let not mercy and truth forsake you, forsake you, forsake you, forsake you, forsake them on the tablets of your I know it's early, can we rock a little bit? Say, write them on, write them on, write them on the tablets of your heart.
sing it with me. He won't louder. He won't. No, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave. No, he won't fail. Do you believe it this morning? I mean, do you really believe it? Because life be life it. And sometimes that life will make you forget it. But don't you ever forget. He keeps his word. He keeps his promise. He's faithful to it. So what the real struggle is, is us being more faithful to him. Because his faithfulness doesn't run out. His faithfulness doesn't move. So the more you lean into him, the easier the winds and the waves become because you realize you can rest in him. Jesus didn't fall asleep because he was sleeping. He fell asleep because he trusted. He knew that he was gonna make it to the other side. So I speak over you this morning. Rest in him even in the midst of your storm because you will make it to the other side. Cause he won't fail. Sing it with me. He won't fail. What else? He won't why? No, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. Yeah. He won't leave you. No, he won't fail. I've seen it with my own eyes. Come on, somebody just go on and say that. Seen it with my own eyes. Come on, anybody ever seen it with your own eyes? Come on, y'all, in the witnesses in the house, in the witnesses in the house. Come on, just say that. Seen it with my own eyes. Come on, you've heard some things. You've, seen, you've seen some things. Eyes. You've witnessed some things. Come on, just tell yourself. Seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it with my own eyes. Come on, opening doors after doors after doors. I've seen it with my own eyes. Making ways after ways after ways. Protecting you from the plots of the enemy. Come on, y'all. It was tough, but we made it through COVID. Come on, y'all. Seen it with my own Somebody going through something right now, but you're still alive. Seen it with my own eyes. Hallelujah, God. Seen it with my own eyes. You know, the day was so important. We was talking about when Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. That whole storm, that's what he said. And what was interesting, the Bible says they became afraid. They were terrified. And Lord blessed me with that. He says, Terrence, I told them, let's go to the other side. I said, what happened? He says, sometimes we hear messages and miss the promise. It's so many sermons, it's so many scriptures that go forth every week. And you have to make certain that when you're hearing the message, come on, that you don't miss the promise. When God says something, when he told them, we're going to the other side, they should have known for certain. That yes, it's going to be stormy. And yes, it's going to be rocky. But we're going to make it. So when you're listening to your favorite preachers and when you come to church on Sunday and when you hear the word that shall go forth today, there's a promise. God wants you to stand on the promise. Amen. He is a promise keeper. Anybody believe that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, um, this month, we have been taking a moment to talk about how to be rich. And we understand in order to be rich, you have to first be enriched. And we talked about the first message that God wants us to be rich primarily because he wants us to help fulfill his agenda in the earth. That's the primary thing. Amen. And rich for people is different. 
And so it, it, it's, it's very important that you understand just this month and what we're doing. And one of the things that we're doing as a church, uh, we are blessing people, mortgages and, and um, you know, rent and all that kind of stuff. Just to say, hey, here go a little something to kind of help you, you know, get through the rest of the week. Amen. So we, we got something up under your chair. If you go under your chair, uh, you may see it with your own eyes today. Amen. If you, if you look in faith, amen, you got you to gotta dig up under there. If you get something, I want you to yeah, just lift your hand up if you got something. Oh, come on. Seeing it with my own eyes. Come on, y'all. Yeah, come on. Anybody else? Come on. That's it. All right, I, I guess nobody else. Y'all, you got to dig up under there. Amen. It may, every section ought to have a little something. Amen. Every section. If God ordered your steps today, you ought to be in the right seat. Amen. Come on, that goes something. Yeah, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. See, if you would have been smiling, you, the Lord probably would have led you to that seat, this middle section, amen. So it's probably going to be two uh, for the next service. Come on, just hug you about three people before you go to your seats, amen. Thank you, praise team. We thank God in a special way for this opportunity today. And those of you who are watching, thank God in a special way for you as well, amen. I pray and hope you had a blessed and wonderful week. Listen, we were able to baptize some 40 people on yesterday. Come on, can we give God praise for that? And we're excited about just God adding to the church and so many individuals were baptized and what God is doing in life of the church. Last week, we had Christopher Bush uh, who was here to be a blessing to us to talk about uh, finances and today we have Sharita Humphrey. Sharita, will you stand up? Come on, y'all, give it up for Sharita. Yes, and uh, when you hear from this powerful woman of God, my wife gonna be speaking to her on today, just giving us some insight. Uh, it is going to truly be a blessing like never before. Amen. So here, here's really what we're doing for those of you who are watching. We wanna instruct or inspire you to make certain you have a financial plan the bible says this good planning and hard work leads to prosperity and whenever there was a problem in the bible god gave the people a plan he gave them a plan because it's very important to sit down and count the costs that's what the Bible says. And you get a plan. And, and one of the areas of our lives that God is expecting us to be good stewards over, where it's our finances. But I just believe that in order to have wealth, you must first have wisdom. There is wisdom that comes with wealth. And here's the thing. If you get wealth without wisdom, you waste it. And there's so many people wasting what God is blessing them with because they lack the wisdom. So what we want to do as a church, can we just stop and, and can we be intentional on this area of our lives? Because I believe that month, this spiritual too. Can I get a witness? Can we, get a, can we praise God for that? Amen. Like, like money is spiritual and, and health is spiritual and being a husband is spiritual and being a father and, and being a single and being a mother, like all of that, God wants us to represent. Amen. And a part of God's plan, and we talked about that on last week, is, is, is to make certain that we are generous when it comes to giving. God wants us to be generous. He wants us to bring a tithe. Amen. And I found four things that I want to share with you today as we prepare to honor the Lord. Four scriptures that, it, that explains the purpose of tithing, the place of tithing, the day of tithing, and the promise of tithing. And so let me give you right quick the purpose of tithing. 
just real quick, let me show you by way of the screen, and they should have it up. I want y'all to see uh, this particular verse. It says, the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always to put God first. Look at that. In your lives. That's what it's about. To teach you to put God first. Torsha and I, the last 30 years, have committed that if God give us $10, we're giving him a dollar. If God give us a thousand, we're giving, we give it, we're giving him a hundred. Amen. She got a new business. I'm praying for the favor of God on it. Amen. God bless us with, with, with 10 million from the business. We're giving the Lord a million. Are y'all getting this? We're going to give it to him. Amen. Because we understand the principle is about putting God first. Putting God first. Amen. And that's the purpose of tithing. So when you're talking to people on TikTok, you're talking to people, you know, online, you're talking to your friends, you remind them that the purpose of tithing is to put God first. To put him first. Amen. And so he wants you to bring the 10%. Why? Because of what it represents. Do you know what the 10% represents? Your heart. That's all. It represents your heart. It represents your heart. And I want to give you this word. That if you give God the 10%. He going to bless the rest. And you want to make certain. The rest is blessed. Amen. So let's talk about the place of tithing. Well, let's look at it. Malachi 3 and 10 says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Well, what's that? So that there will be food enough in my temple. So he's explained to us storehouse, that the storehouse is the temple. He says, bring it to the temple. If you do, I will open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it. Try it. Let me prove it to you. You know, years ago, I had people who would say, well, you know, I give my tithe to the Red Cross. And you know, uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy was having a rough time and I gave him a tithe. No, 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 no. Don't confuse charity with tithing. That's called a charity that you're giving to the Red Cross. That's called a charity that you're giving to people who are less fortunate than you are. Tithing is worship. And God gives the place. He says, tithing is an act of worship. Can you help me preach? Look at your name. I'm not really preaching, but I'm preaching. Look at your name and say, neighbor, don't confuse charity with tithing. My tithe is an act of worship because it is ex an expression to the Lord that I am putting you first. And where do the Bible say bring it? He said bring it to the storehouse and he explains that the storehouse is the temple. And in those days it was the church. Amen. So when should you tithe? Well, let's see what God got to say about it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 16 and 2. It says, every Sunday, wow, <laughs> look at it. Every Sunday, look at the Bible, y'all. We just lean into the scripture. It says, every Sunday, each of you must put aside some money. Watch this. This is big. In proportion to what you have earned. He says, whatever you've earned, I want you to put some aside. And every Sunday when you come, I want you to bring your tithe. So when should you tithe? On Sunday. Every Sunday. Amen. Now some of you, I know you do it during the week, that kind of thing. And so you can go and send it on Wednesday too. I think he'll take it on Wednesday. Amen. <laughs> if God gives you the ability to get well, the least we can do is bring him a portion to help advance his kingdom in the earth. Amen. Look what he says. It's right there in the scripture. He says, based on what you've earned. Based on what you earned. Amen. I just want to make certain this ain't what I'm saying. What God got to say about it. Because everybody got an opinion. But what is God's heart? Amen. 
So we talked about the purpose. We talked about the place. We talked about the day. Now look at the promise of tithing. He says, honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income. And he will fill your barns with wheat and barley and overflow your, your wine vats with the finest wines. That's a promise, y'all. That is a promise. And Malachi says, you know what I do? I will open up the window and pour you out a blessing you don't have room enough to receive. And when I said that, when I was praying, he says, no, no, no. Go back and read the verse. It did not say window. It said windows. Because a home always have more doors than windows. And God says, test me in this. Try me in this. And I will show you that you will live in overflow. Amen. And so church, as you prepare your financial plan, oh, you need debt. You got to have, you got to eliminate debt. You need insurance. You need some investments. But before you do all of that, put God first. Amen. In fact, here's why I believe you ought to put God first. And I told you this on last week. Amen, Robert. Because he gave you the whole pie. And all God wants is a slice. You telling me you can't take care of your stuff with all the rest and you just give God a slice. The first slice ought to be given to God. Anybody believe he gave you the whole pie? Come on, y'all, the whole pie. So, so this requires faith. Faith. And faith is so simple. You know what it is? Doing what he say to do. That's what faith is. Because sometimes don't understand this. But the people who live by faith, even when you don't understand, you do what God wants you to do. So you give him the pie. Matter of fact, look at him and say, put that slice. Come on, talk back to me in there. Come on. On real current, do I have a witness in here? I ain't putting, I ain't putting my stuff on real current so church can know what I do. You, you Hulu on real current. Your phone bill on real current. Your car note on real current. Come on, y'all, them, them red bottoms you got on your feet, amen, you paying that off on real current. Come on, talk back to me. And if God have blessed us, as a church, we don't just sit on the premises. We stand on his promises. Amen. See, see here's, here's the thing. It's a whole lot of new stuff. But this is what I believe. If it's new, it's probably not true. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. And God is calling for a church who will honor him. When it comes to the word, we can worship him on Sunday. But God wants us to worship every day of the week. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody open your mouth and shout. Money, Money. is coming to my house. Come on, say it like you mean it. Money is coming to my house. Come on, I need you to speak it over your life. My, my children's 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 children children will have a picture of me on a fireplace do I have a witness in here come on y'all the Bible says I once was young and now I'm, I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken here's the principle nor the seed nor the seed begging for bread because if we plan according to God's word he is going to honor it. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe it? I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, some of y'all in a financial hole. You're in a financial hole. You don't got to raise your hand. But here's the thing. You about to come out that hole. You said, I'm coming. Say it like you mean it. Come on, I'm coming out of the hole. Come on, go and tell your neighbor, say, my money 
might still be in the hole but my mind is already out the hole and if my mind get out of something it's only a matter of time before everything else somebody give God a better praise than that somebody give God a better shout than that come on open your mouth and shout we are canceling we are canceling generational curses like never before father I pray in Jesus name we don't come to give out of compulsion we don't come to give out of pressure we do it because you said it God you told us in the word that wisdom is the supreme thing that understanding is the supreme thing and we pray today oh God that you in, increase the faith of your people hallelujah to be obedient that they stop waiting for a feeling because faith is not about a feeling faith is about obedience even when we don't understand and in this area of our lives as leaders of our family help us to steward it well help us to steward it better Lord we apologize we're sorry for not being better stewards over what you've entrusted us with but God we can't change yesterday but moving forward we decree and declare we will honor you with what you blessed us with and we start today bringing you a tithe. And so if you need an offering envelope, slip your hands up real high. And no pressure. This ain't pressure because my Bible says he don't, we, we, we don't give out of compulsion. God loves a cheerful giver. And young people, here's the thing. If you get this now, this principle, everything we're teaching you, it's going to change your life forever. Amen. Today, God said it. I went to the verse. He, all the verses, he said it. He talks about money over 2,500 times. Because there's a connection between money and your heart. Amen. So let's prepare as we get ready for the second quarter of the year. Come on, let's get in order, mama. Come on, get in order. When it comes to bringing the time. Those of you who are watching, let's get in order. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As your shepherd, my desire for you is that you are saved. And salvation is not just getting out of Egypt. Salvation is going into a land flowing with milk and honey. And I just believe, I wish I had Bible folk, that God ain't just delivered me just for manna and quail I wish I had some Bible folk he has delivered me so that I can move into a land flowing with milk and honey and I want you to understand watch this when it comes to getting your finances right it's not magic it is management it is stewardship it is getting a plan and through the power of the Holy Spirit it is working and you work and somewhere in between good planning and hard work you experience prosperity hallelujah amen i want you to stand on your feet if you need an offering envelope slip up your hands amen i post all these on tiktok or instagram all these verses for clarity and for understanding glory to god come on let's be let's honor the Lord in this area our deacon's going to place some buckets right here if you give by way of technology we want you to do that if you're a visitor you don't tithe here but you can bring an offering here this is your church is this way you're being fed come on God wants you to bring a tithe because the tithe represents my heart so father we give back to you what you've given to us God I pray in Jesus name everything we do will be done to glorify your holy and righteous name. We thank you, O God, for victory, even in the area of finances. In Jesus' name.
faithful through the ages. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness. From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to So live your earth in the room right here.
faithfulness, it never runs dry. So we bless your name this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you, God, that we can trust you in every season because your promises will remain the same in all things. And everybody who agrees shouted amen. amen. And it is so. You may have your seats. God bless you. Well, good morning, family. How are you all doing on today? Are y'all feeling good? Are y'all feeling inspired and fulfilled on today? Well, it is so good to see each and every one of you. I'm grateful to God for this opportunity to come. As you all know, for the last couple of weeks, we have been talking about what it means to be rich and how important it is that if you're going to be rich, you have to first be enriched, amen? Amen. So we're excited about all the wonderful things that we have in place uh, to serve you this month. And we also want to remind those of you today that on April the 27th, please get your tickets because Anthony O'Neill will be here to pour into us, to give us tools and resources so that we can have a wealthy mindset. Amen. Have you gotten your tickets? Turn to your neighbor and say, have you gotten your tickets? Now listen, either this time next year, we can be in a better financial situation than we're in today, or we can choose not to use the tools and just stay where we are. I don't know about you, but I want to move ahead and be a part of those who are ready to move into that wealthy mindset. I also want to just let you all know as we prepare to um, continue to sow into you that after this service, if you have signed up for new members orientation, it's going to take place. We don't want you to miss it. So please do that. And if you have any questions about where you're supposed to go, you can talk to our guest services and they can direct you. And then I want to just say, where are all the sisters at? Let me see you by show of hands. I see your beautiful faces in the place. We want to make certain that you join us for a night as we come together to worship. The sisters are having an event here, and it is entitled Embrace. And it's just an opportunity for us to come together and really embrace the season that we're in. How many of, know, how many of you know some of us just need to embrace our worth? to know that we are valuable and we don't have to accept just anything. Amen. There is so much God has in store for us. So we, we want you to come and join us to be a part of that celebration. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful time. Well, I'm super excited because today I have joining me a beautiful soul. This woman of God is coming to us today to share her story. And I know you're probably looking at her wondering, who is she? She's going to tell you a little bit about who she is, but this is what I know just after a brief conversation with her. She's a woman of faith. She's a woman of faith, and she's a woman who knows that if you're going to acquire wealth, if you're going to be rich, it's going to first start with your thinking. It's going to start with your mind. That's the first place you have to make certain that it's in alignment. And so I'm excited to have Sharita Humphrey here on today. She is a financial expert. And you know what? She hasn't always been. So are y'all ready to buckle your seats and get into this conversation? Because I just know it's going to be so, so good. Sharita, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome. My husband threw me up here, y'all. Y'all pastor decided he was just going to let me come do this. 
but I submitted, I'm here, and I'm doing it, and I'm excited because I always love the opportunity to connect with beautiful women of God, powerful women of God, and I love that she's also a chocolate woman of God. Now, I, I'm, I'm not saying, I love all of y'all, the yellow ones too, <laughs> but I'm chocolate, so you know. <laughs> But yes, you are beautiful. And so as I was stating, you know, wealth, it starts with a wealthy mindset, right? Yes, ma'am. And so I read something when I was looking at your website, and I love what it says. It says that you help women trade their nine to five for time and financial freedom via entrepreneurship. Yes, ma'am. I like the sound of that. That's my You know, as a budding entrepreneur, that excited me. So I know we're going to get a little bit more into that. But before we do, why don't you just tell us who you are, Sharita? So I'm Dr. Sharita Humphrey. I'm an award-winning financial education instructor, but I'm also a small business um, mentor. I have helped hundreds and now approaching thousands of women women, um, to get out of debt, manage their money, but ultimately become the CEOs of thriving businesses. Um, I have not come from wealth. We didn't have wealthy conversations around the table. We didn't even have rich conversations. We were trying to keep the lights on. Um, And not to take away from my parents, they can't teach past what they know. And so it was very important to me when I was talking to pastor and first lady um, to not talk about the accolades because those are things that are acquired. But the gift is the ministry And the one thing that God taught me was that stewardship and teaching others, especially women, was my was my gift. And I never imagined that after hitting rock bottom, that God said, this is it. Mm. We want we want to hear more about that rock bottom. And the reason um, I I want you to talk about it is because a couple of weeks ago, our pastor, he preached a message on how to get out of a financial hole. And you yourself know firsthand what that is. You use those hands and those feet to get out of your financial hole. So tell us a little bit about that and what steps did you take, Sharita? So the one thing, the first thing that I would say is that mindset is everything. I have a negative money mindset. Um, And I think that leaving home too early, for those who are young, it's okay to attach from your parents, but make sure that you have a game plan and a blueprint before you do that, especially one that's financial. Um, Because I did not have those things and I hit rock bottom in the worst way. It would have been okay if I was homeless just by myself, but homeless with two kids, that was another whole nother thing. So, I just told myself when I hit rock bottom and I was, I said, you know what, I'm looking at my driver license and it's coming up to expiration. And I told myself, there's no way, God, that I'm going to put this, mo- this shady motel address on my new driver license. Mm, come on. And I said that, God, I will give everything to you. Everything. This is bigger than me. And if, I, if you help me off this floor, because I was, if you went to my website, I said I went from the four to floors. Everything that I'm living right now, I wrote this sleeping on a, on a floor. So the floor was my beginning. It was, it was the ceiling. <laughs> I, wrote, I literally wrote this, and I told God this. I will tell God's people that you pulled me from the floor. And that was it. That very moment, my two children were sleeping in, that, in the bed, and, and they just started hugging me. I, I know what Oprah means when she said, you had that ugly cry. Because right then, they just hugged me, and, and I told them, I don't even know where these words were coming from, but shout out to the Houston Public Library for teaching this young woman. I read everything, every book while we were homeless. Every single thing, everything I could put my hands on, I started to, I said, Lord, increase my vernacular, increase my vocabulary, so that every word that I speak is wealthy, that it represents who you are. And I turned to my children, and they were hugging me, and I said, I'm going to make you trust fund kids. Speaking it. I love it. (laughs) I didn't even know what that meant, but it it sounded good at the time, and it helped me. (laughs) 
And what you said, God said, if you, if you believe it, he'll, he'll show you that it can happen. And I told God this. I said, God, I will never misappropriate anything that you place in these hands ever again. And that I would give and, I, and make me release my hands that I'm not in a tight fist when it comes to giving. These were things I was saying to God when I was homeless because I wanted him to, I, want, I needed to hear it for myself. But I wanted God to know this was a, this was a partnership. That, that he was more than my friend, that we was going to do this thing called life together. And from there, I read everything that I could possibly put my hands on. And I can tell you, I, the most hurtful thing was sending in to try to get a secured card with my own money and being denied. But God said, no means next opportunity. Repeat that again. <laughs> Repeat that. It hurt me to my heart, y'all, when they told me no. But God said, no means next opportunity. He said, I said, God, okay, you got little bars there. I was just like, okay. He told me, he said that I want you to realize that no does not mean that you're not going to do it. It just means that you're not going to do it with them. That what I said is what I said, and it is so. So I want to share with you all, God told me when I was homeless that no is the cousin of so. So that means that your no is God's yes. And from there, y'all, I wrote down everything that I wanted, that I was petitioning from God. I said, God, what, was, what am I missing? He said that I want you to put me first. So when, when Pastor said that this morning, it hit different. Yeah, that's where it starts. It hit different. And I told God, I said, I will give it all, God, if you get me. If, I said, it's, not, it's above me now. I told these kids in front of you, Lord, that I were going to make them trust, trust fund kids. And I don't even know what that means, but I'm going to trust you. <laughs> so if I trust you, then I know that they are in I know that you, that you will entrust me, that I will be able to do the things that I'm writing down, that these are just not words on the paper, that these are words, that's the blueprint and the benchmarks, the milestones. So when I come out of this, that I can be able to share what I did. I looked at my credit reports, and I'm not ashamed to say this, 342, 414, 484. How old were you at the time, Sharita? Very young, late 20s. Late 20s, okay. And I said, God, what, am I, what can I do with this? And God's, he's a, he's a faithful God. He said nothing. <laughs> I was just like, 340. He said nothing. So he said, but I need you to learn what these numbers mean. Mm -hmm. So that way that you can get out of turning those no's from man into yeses from me. And I did that. I wrote the credit bureaus. I have every letter in my garage in the file cabinet with every letter that I wrote to the credit bureau ex explaining to them what happened and what I was gonna do to rectify the situation. It took me a while, y'all, but I'm gonna tell you about the goodness of God. I went from three, 342 to 841. Mm. Now, Sharita, Sharita, <laughs> Sharita, Sharita. <laughs> 800, that's, that's, that's the number. That's, that's where you want to be. That's you want to be in the number, you want to be in the 800s. Yeah, 1%. Had, how long did it take you to do that? What I realized is, again, to the shout out to the Houston Public Library, is that it's about age to get to the 800s. Management to get there and building an understanding that if I was able to start with a budget, because if you don't tell your money what to do, the internet, your colleagues, your family, and some of your friends and sometimes your foes is gonna tell you how to spend your money. And so I knew for me that I was a back seat, I was a back seat driver to my finances. And sometimes I, I realized on that floor that I was in the trunk. Because <clears throat> and I told God, I said, you know what? I wanna be in the driver's seat of my financial future. I want to get to the promise and the destiny that you told me that I, that was set forth for me because wealth is our due portion. Yes. And it is not about the money. It's a transfer vehicle. 
But I said, you know what, Lord, I want to be in the, always in the driver's seat. And so I started to manage my money. But the one thing that I told God, I said, God, I need a, I said, I have a dream of working for the government. And, he, and it, it didn't become, it didn't, I never imagined just telling God what I want. He would bless me with it. Because a lot of times we talk ourselves out of what God said that you can have, that he can give you. And so let me tell you something. I said, you know what? I said, Mom, I'm going to apply for the government. Your parents see greatness in you before you even imagine what you can imagine. Because she said, it's already yours. Mm. I was nervous. Woman of faith. What? <laughs> <laughs> she had to be. She was a powerful woman of faith. Mm -hmm. And so she said, you know what? I want you to dress for the position, not the job. Come on. That's different. And so I said, okay, mom. Yes. She said, because of, she said, God gave you a position. Man gives you a job. Mm. That's so good. Okay, Sharita. Now, I know we moved fast through that story, and we talked about you being homeless. But you have to paint the picture. You have to let the audience know from being homeless, mm -hmm. you said from the floor so to Forbes. Forbes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I don't know if everybody caught that. Yes, ma'am. All right. So when you talk about Forbes, help us know what that means. You've been able to come from homelessness to being in a place where you are doing, we talked about it the other day. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many millions and billions of dollar deals that you're doing <laughs> right now today. So you have to let us know what rooms you've been able to walk into, people you've been able to meet as a result of you changing your mindset from being from going from rags to riches. You did this on with God's help. Oh yes. Absolutely God 100 leading, but you you put in the work. Yes. To do it. Faith without works is dead. Yes. Faith without works is dead. So some of the rooms you've been in, the tables you've been at, the magazines you've been on. So I will say that the best, posi the best position that God gave me was working for the government. Mm -hmm. Because I, my first day when they called me and told me I got the, when I got the position, they said, you're going to start on April 1st. And I was like, is this a joke? <laughs> is it April Fool? <laughs> it's, do, I really got the, do I really have the job? <laughs> and so I was so excited, y'all, because y'all have to remember, I was working and building, learning and building. Finally got us out of that, mot uh, out of that motel, got us a place, because I said, you know what? All I need is a place, Lord. Once I had a place, I had a, pla I had a plan before I had a place. Mm -hmm. Before I got a new address, I had a place, yes. a plan. Plan. And so I was so excited, y'all, I'm going to be fully transparent. When they told me I got the job, I was so excited. I didn't even ask them what were the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize until the day that I showed up that they said, you know what? Um, it's a good thing. They're like, you know what? We give 12 paychecks a year. You get paid every first of the month. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, I didn't ask that part. <laughs> I was just excited to be in the room. <laughs> But it was so funny, I didn't even get nervous about it because I said, if God bought me here, I don't get, I'm not gonna get another check till May 1st. But God said, go home. Yeah. I got another plan for you. As I started talking to my colleagues throughout the month and I was like, they said, what are you doing on your lunch break? You sitting here every day with this calculator. I said, I'm work I said we only get 12 paychecks, y'all. They sound good, but I can't go back to where I came from. So I started, I was budgeting then, I was planning then, I was putting things in place. The next month came, on the first, I said, okay, God, I'm going to pay everyone, I'm going to give my tithes, I'm going to save, and then I'm going to pay all my bills. And God said, keep doing it. All my colleagues by the 15th, hope anybody here from the government, but let me tell you something, they take care of us well. But many of us mismanage what we have because we know that the government going to take care of us. And by the 15th or the 20th, they were this close to a payday loan. And by the 25th, they were just like, when is the first? And I remember we were all sitting at lunch and they were just like, you ordering a lot for it to be the 25th. 
And I said, well, praise be to God that God told me to pay in advance. And so they were like, well, why are you doing that? And I was just like, I said, I told you I'm not coming back from where I came from because they didn't really know my story. But God told me to keep paying. And before I knew it, y'all, I had paid all my bills for a quarter. And I remember telling my colleagues as I was happy, I was just like, praise be to God. I don't have to worry about that 20, the 15th through the 25th curse. And they were just like, well, how did you do it? I said, I, I said God told me to, I wrote this plan on the floor. And before I knew it, y'all, I had two years of my salary saved. All of my bills were paid for one year. Wow. And I thought for a second, for a minute, first lady, I was like, I'm just to step back, roll back. I said, I'm going to retire, come back, double dip like my colleagues. I'm good. Uh-huh. But God said, he woke me up in the middle of the night and said, this is your two weeks notice. Wow. And I said, wait a minute, God, wait a minute. Life just got good. It's comfortable. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he said, I can't birth greatness in you in comfort. I can't birth the greatness, greatness in you in comfort. comfort. And I was scared, y'all. Wow. I, st- I, st- I started turning off. I was just like, okay, maybe that was just something I had watched. So I said, let me turn the TV off. So for about three months, I'm not going to even lie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real. I said, okay, God kept saying, two weeks. Two weeks turned into six months, First Lady. I sat on God's promise for six months. Mm. Finally, I told my mom, Mom, God keep waking me up. She said, because you sleeping on him. <laughs> and she hung up the phone. Because <laughs> she said, do you know what time you calling me? She said, if God keeps waking you up in the middle of the night, he got a message for you that you That's need to right. receive. Yes, that you need to answer. So when my mom hung up the phone, I said, okay, God. I waited till I got to work and typed my two weeks notice. Mm-hmm. I sent it to my supervisor. She sent it back. And she said, no, you're too young to go out. What are you going to do? It's safe in here. Mm. And I told her, I said, there's no, God said, (laughs) I put it in an email on the government's email. So it's still there that God said he can't birth greatness in comfort. Mm. So she held my two weeks notice. So I was there for an additional six weeks. (laughs) (laughs) She said, I'm just trying to make sure, Uh get you one more check under your belt so you can remember (laughs) how good it is over here. And I said, no, I got to go. I said, God said, I got to end this quarter. Mm -hmm. I left that day. I was supposed to stay all day, but God said, when it's lunchtime, that's it. Mm -hmm. I didn't go back, y'all. She didn't go back. I didn't go back. Back yet. I haven't been back. (laughs) Not going back. I haven't been back. But I'm going to tell you how good God is. I want a government contract to talk to the state agency of the of this and my supervisor was in the audience. Mm, look at God. Because I said, God said, I told you I have an assignment for you. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. And I start helping women. I got online and I said, Y'all, I quit my job. <laughs> and they was like, the government one? Because I was sharing online. I was just like, Did you left your government job? And I said, Yes, God said that I'm supposed to help women to be able to manage their debt, rebuild, and rebuild their credit, show them that one stream of income mm-hmm. is not an option. And so I didn't know that people were going to start taking it. My inbox started filling up. I was just like, okay, look at God. I said, like, okay, maybe little trickles. But I didn't realize how many, how many women that God had set up for me, had set up waiting on me to be able to tell them the exact same thing that I was doing. I was just telling them. I was like, okay, this is a real business. But someone that was a good friend of mine was a writer, and she said, hey, I'm writing a, st- I'm writing a story about the fastest growing businesses in 2018. And she said, we need to round it out with a strong black woman, and that I'm gonna, and you will round out this story. So I was featured, that story got picked up by Forbes, MSNBC, CNBC. And that is how I went from the floor to Forbes. Because guess what? Forbes found out about it, and they shared it, and they shared it again. That is so phenomenal. I, 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 I want you to share, you know, just with the audience, you know, just having um, that mindset, 
how that's taking you to where you are today, having the, the business you have today. You lead a movement called the Money Mindset Movement. Yes. And this is out of your personal story yes. and what you've been able to accomplish. So when I was featured in Forbes, a friend of mine invited me to a conference. It's full of money nerds. I was just like, okay, well, this is my people. And... I told them what was, you know, they were just like, it was, I felt like different from everybody else because I didn't have the same pathway to building. I didn't do that. I said, you know what? And I felt lonely. Even though I was in Forbes, I still kind of felt imposter syndrome because I was like, I don't even know what this means. I'm the only entrepreneur in my family. Now I'm in Forbes. What am I supposed to do with this? Three weeks later, a brand that had been was working with me, they were like, hey, we want to sign you to a brand partnership. And I became the media spokesperson and I told them, I don't see anybody on, this, on, on your C-level suite that looks like me. And I said, for me to sign a deal with you and be able to share with my audience on why I should work with you and amplify the works that you're doing, we're gonna put in place social responsibility and DEI because I can't get behind things that God's not behind. <laughs> and I told them that and that spread it. Three weeks later, I was on iHeartMedia I went to talk, speak on The Breakfast Club, and then from there, the iHeartMedia saw this, and I've been on iHeartMedia four times. Six months after that, Martha Stewart heard, uh, the editor from Martha Stewart heard my story, and she said, we're looking for someone to highlight in 2022 who's self-made. And I emailed back the editor, and I said, you know what? I can't let you put that out there. God made me. Yes. And so I, I was scared, and I remember telling my mom, I don't know if they're gonna run with that story. The editor reached back out to me and she said, Faith Got Me Heroes will be the title of the story, featuring Dr. Sharita M. Humphrey. And so she said, it's a different, it's a different story because it doesn't come from one where it's, it's, you're truly sharing with people the work, what most try to cover up. I hear financial rock bottom, I did it with two kids. The, the state could have took them, but, I, but, but they didn't because God, and God had us covered. And from that, when I was sitting in New York waiting to be interviewed by iHeartMedia, God said, start a parent company to your brand. And I was like, God, I already got a lot on my plate. And he was just like, he said, you can't pray for increase and not think that I'm gonna give you more responsibility. So I called my attorney and I said, hey, when I get back in Q1, start the parent company. My attorney was just like, I was waiting on you. But I'm going to tell you something. I want to be able to tell you that God will put people in your life that will ensure that, he, that you're able to meet, to do the things that you need to do. Because I couldn't afford this attorney when I got started. Purpose partner, Sharita. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he told me, I'm not going to charge you until you make your first million. Because I believe in your dream. And he said, young lady, you are, he said, you're creating impact. And you're doing it shamelessly and you're using your story. Not anything make, made up. You're showing everything to the people. As soon as we got off, y'all, that's why you have to have purposeful partners. Yes. The BBC reached out to me and said, hey, we heard this story from Forbes. We're going to fly our team to Houston, Texas, because we want to be able to record this part of your journey so we can say that we were a part of it. So for 14 hours, the BBC and their team recorded me, and they said, I want to be able to go back to where it started. I said, you can't. I said, the reason why is because it's now the target or target across near NRG. I said, but you can go back and I can show you where I got the education from. And that was at the Houston Public Library. So the, Houston, so the BBC reached out to the city of Houston and the Houston Public Library and said, hey, we want to be able to bring somebody to you that you've been able to, who used the Houston Public Library and to be able to show you what, what these books did. And so that's what happened. I love it. I love and so, it. First Lady, mm -hmm. those books changed my life. Mm -hmm. But God, my mindset was that, you know what, I'm going to be wealthy. I'm going to do everything that I'm supposed to be wealthy. Because I was wealthy before it landed in my bank account. I was wealthy. I was yes. doing things yes. that was going to make it. my, what are That's we doing it. with our bodies? Mm -hmm. That's it. What, what are you doing with your physical health? Mm -hmm. What are you doing with your mental health? What are you doing with your emotional health? Those are things that I wish someone that was before me would have told me. So that's why, it's, that's why I come here to be able to tell you all that I didn't get in these rooms 
because of the accolades. I just told the truth, and the truth shall set you free and open up and make room. Because it, I would not, I'm coming from D.C., Virginia, and Atlanta. And I can tell y'all, I met with the USDA. I have a meeting with the Department of Energy. I met with a billionaire who told me to tell the people. I said, what do you want? Tell me what you want I should do so I can tell the people. He says, become good stewards and acquire. Make sure that you acquire the things that are going to make you wealthy, that goes beyond money. I heard this from a billionaire on Tuesday of this week, y'all. So the rooms that I've been invited into, still with, my, with someone who's seen me in the last few years build it from scratch. I'm not supposed to be in these rooms statistically. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't worry about statistics. That's none right. of his business. That's right. That's right. Will y'all help me celebrate God as we celebrate all the wonderful things he's done by way of Sharita? I, you know, as we prepare to, to wrap this up, um, there's so much more I wanted to share, but we, we're out of time. But one of the things, Sharita, we know that wealthy bank accounts come from a healthy mind. Amen. Wealthy bank accounts come from a healthy mindset. And so Sharita has this movement, and she has people here on today who you can speak to, who can help you get on a path where it doesn't matter where you start. No. What matters is how you finish. And to hear your story, to hear that you took free resources. Free. That cost you nothing. Nothing. And you're able to sit here today and share this amazing testimony with us is such a move of God. And family, I just want to encourage you all, as we are in this month of financial literacy, as we're coming in contact with individuals who are sharing their personal stories about how they've been able to obtain wealth, I think it's so important for us to come alongside them take advantage of the free resources that they are making available to us. And Sharita has some free resources. And as I stated, she has a table out there. She has a life and money e-guide that you can obtain. And if you would like to do that, I believe, is it a QR code that they yes, can go Yes, there's a QR code. And then there's SharitaMHumphrey.com forward slash money. Um, I definitely want to be able to invite you into my community in my online community money mindset movement. I'm always in there. Yes. I'm always in that group. So I want to be able to help more people become wealthy in every aspect from mindset to bank accounts. I, my DMs are open, so I answer questions. Yeah, it's really me. Because I want to be able to help as many of God's people to create a level of wealth that we can pour back into this ministry into a greater way because we can't, I can't do it by myself. I, I, don't, I don't just bring people to the table. I pull out the chair. And that's what I got when I walked in this door, when I walked in this building. So I want you to pull more people into this movement with me because I want to be able to see more women. I, I mean, I love y'all. <laughs> but I want to be able to see more women CEOs at the table. Yes, yes. Let's praise God for that. Let's praise God for that. You know, when it comes to small businesses, women are leading in the small business arena. And so to hear you say that, that's so exciting. I'm grateful to God for what he's doing in your life. And I just uh, want to encourage you guys. Uh, Sharita has a link to her discounted 28-day course from financial chaos to cash. All right. So I want to make certain that y'all go out, get these resources. They are available to us so that we can be on a path to having a wealthy mindset. Sharita, thank you so thank much. Thank you for so much. That's on today. Thank and y'all help me celebrate her. Thank you. As we prepare to leave this place on today, um, I just, again, want to encourage you. Let's move by changing our minds. We can move from a place of scarcity to a place of plenty with the help of God. Not only will it take faith, but it's also gonna take us to have to put in the work. 
You know, I was talking with my husband and we were just talking about how when it comes to, to work and putting it in, a lot of people want to bypass that. We want to skip the work and we want to jump into the success. How many of you know, and Sharita, we talked about this, people win the lottery all the time. If y'all don't go do research, I don't know the, the stats, but a majority of the people who gain that wealth overnight lose it. By 80%. 80%, she has the stats, 80%. What a shame that is to find yourself, and I know some of you, I, I feel it in my spirit, you've been saying it. I, I pray I win the lottery, I pray I win the lottery. I, I, heard, I hear it in the spirit realm. But here's the thing, God doesn't want us to win the lottery. God wants us to be wealthy. He doesn't want us to just obtain riches. He wants us to be enriched. God has a purpose and a plan for what he wants to do in our lives. And I just love the plan and the purpose God has for yours, Sharita. Thank you so much for desiring to help us and bring us along with you. Thank you. All right, I believe, John, are you coming? All right, John is coming. Sharita, you can come with me. We have more services to attend. But thank you all so much for your time. We hope that you were blessed thank you on today. Come on, can we celebrate them one more time? Amen. Listen, we're getting ready to go. But I just want to make, take a moment to extend the offer of salvation to someone. And so if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do, whether it's get out of financial debt, whether it's trying to move forward in life. How many of you know it's not strength, it's strategy? And we believe as a ministry that following Jesus makes you better at life. And so if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, will you just repeat this prayer after me? Father, I recognize I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And I invite you into my life to be Lord of my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you raised Jesus from the dead. Listen, family, we believe that if you decided and you declared that out of your mouth that today you are saved. Can we celebrate those that accepted Jesus Christ for the very first time? Again, we're getting ready to go, but just want to make mention of April 27th. If you have not signed up for our financial workshop, please make sure that you do so. Amen. It is very important uh, that you sign up. The QR code is on the screen, April 27th. And then May 10th, the sisters will be getting together. So super excited for you all. Make sure that you are registering for that event as well. Well, let me pray for you as we get ready to go and pray for your week. I pray that you will have an amazing week, that unexpected business will come your way. I don't know about you, as I listened to Dr. Sharita, I was reminded of the old song that says, there's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same for you, amen? So you just look at the person next to you and say, I'm expecting for God to do a miracle on your behalf. Come on, look at somebody else. I'm expecting God to do a miracle on your behalf. Let me pray for you. Father, we love you and we thank you. As we leave this place, not from your presence, we pray for protection. We pray that you would bless us, that you would do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We thank you for favor in every area of our lives, and we thank you that our finances are increasing. God, we declare today as we leave that we walk in abundance and we live in prosperity. We give you thanks. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God said amen. If you are here for new members orientation, please just come to the front.